Now there are two types of calculations that involve the speed of a wave. One is in which we relate the speed of the wave in terms of its frequency and its wavelength. We'll look at that type of calculation later. But in this lesson we're looking at the other type. of. This is really just a standard motion problem. In this case we consider the speed of a travelling wave pulse. For example it could be a sound pulse produced by this chap shouting or banging a drum. And so as he does so the sound pulse, the sound wave, will move in this direction. And we can treat the motion of that travelling sound pulse in the same way as we deal with the motion of a person riding along a road on a bicycle, exactly the same way. We can say that the velocity of the sound pulse is equal to the distance it covers divided by the time taken. Again the unit will be in metres per second. Now in most of these types of problems the speed of sound will be constant. So for example in this case we're dealing with sound travelling through air. So the speed of sound will be 340 metres per second. If, if we're dealing with other problems for example where the sound is travelling through water, well in that case the speed of sound will be typically 1400 metres per second. <clears throat> so what you've got to do in this type of problem usually is to calculate either the distance that the pulse travels or the time it takes to travel a certain distance. Usually the velocity of the pulse, whether it be in air or water, is usually given to you and invariably involves some type of reflection of the sound. For example, in this case the guy shouts, the sound wave travels across to the mountain, it reflects off of the mountain and we call that reflection, when we're talking about sound, we call that an echo. So we get the echo back again. Now you're usually told the time taken for the sound to travel away, hit the mountain and back again and then from that we calculate the distance to the mountain. So this is really just a standard motion problem involving velocity, distance and time. Let's say for example that the echo takes two seconds to return to the shouter. Let's just write T equals two seconds. And we need to therefore calculate the distance from the man to the mountain. Again, as with all motion problems, we always start with the key expression. In this case, it is V velocity equals distance divided by time. And as I've mentioned on earlier occasions, if you find the manipulation of expressions tricky, one of the ways you can get around this is using a calculation triangle. So we place the division bar in the triangle. Now in this case we have an expression where we have something equals something and then divided by something. Well this D divided by T slots in to the triangle. So we can write D and then at the bottom we have V times T. Okay, we ask ourselves, what is the unknown here? What are we trying to find? Well, we know the velocity because the velocity of sound in air is constant at 340 metres per second. We know the time taken because we've been told that it's t equals 2 seconds. And then the thing we've got to find is the distance. So in this case, we just cover up the distance, all right? And that gives us V times T. So we can rewrite this expression the way we want to with D, this side of the equal sign, equals the velocity times time. We write out our values. V is 340 metres per second. And T equals 2 seconds. And then we substitute those into the equation, giving us D equals... 340 times 2, which equals 680 metres. 
As I mentioned earlier, these types of problems usually involve a reflection. So you've got to remember here that what you've calculated is the total distance covered by the pulse. That's to say its outgoing journey hitting the wall and then its return journey. What you're usually asked to find is the distance from the sound source to the reflecting surface, in this case the mountain. So we remember we actually have to divide this distance by 2. Okay, So we can write the distance to the mountain is equal to half the distance covered by the sound pulse, right? which would be 680 divided by 2, which is equal to 340 meters.